Hi, and welcome to Vera Voices. I'm Michael Jacobson, Vera's director. We're here today with Don Steeman, one of the senior researchers on our Anatomy of Discretion project, which is a National Institute of Justice funded project that looks at the use of prosecutorial discretion in, pros in a couple of prosecutors' agencies around the country. Tell us a bit about uh, what you did, sort of the methodology of how you studied prosecutorial discretion, and maybe list a few of the major findings. We set out to try to understand really how prosecutors make decisions in cases, and we wanted one to try to understand what factors influence prosecutorial decision making at different stages of the process, from screening through charging through uh, plea offer and final sentence recommendation. We also wanted to understand uh, not only what factors influenced decision making, but how prosecutors weighed those factors, how they interpreted them throughout the case. And we wanted to understand what kind of external factors influence prosecutorial decision making. So things, uh, informal and formal uh, mechanisms, perhaps either inside the prosecutor's office or outside, contextual factors that influence decision making throughout a case. So we did that by, by talking to prosecutors in two uh, jurisdictions in the United States, two county prosecutor's offices, one in the southeast and one in the midwest. And we, we, the approach we took was to look at it from several different angles. We looked at um, administrative data on cases, to look at outcomes uh, of the cases through administrative case files. We uh, did an attitudinal survey of prosecutors, asking their, them opinions about how they view their job. Um, about how they interpret their own success, about how they interpret the office's success, what goals they see of, their, of, the pro of the prosecution process of the criminal justice system more generally. And we did a series of focus groups and interviews with prosecutors to try to um, provide more context to their uh, answers in those attitudinal surveys to try to see, get at the meat of how they uh, weigh the factors that they talked about. And finally, we asked them to make decisions in a series of hypothetical cases. So we could look across the office and see how different prosecutors were uh, making decisions about the, about the same case. And what we found were, were, were three things that we think are important. One, um, we found that evidence matters a great deal. It matters a great deal, particularly at the initial screening decision. Prosecutors throughout the life of a case ask two questions. Uh, can I prove this case and should I prove this case? And that first question of can I prove this case is the primary question they ask at screening. And to answer that question, they rely heavily on evidence, almost entirely on evidence, and the strength of the evidence. As the case progresses throughout it, we find that while evidence continues to matter, uh, it starts to matter less. And other factors start to influence their decision making, and they shift to the second question of should I prove this case? And in answering that question throughout the case, um, a lot of different factors come in. Uh, primarily, uh, severity of defense, defendant criminal history, but other factors start to matter too. Other aspects of the defendant, other aspects of the case. Um, and what we found most important, perhaps, was that there were contextual factors that mattered, things outside the case that also started to affect it. Uh, one of the primary ones was uh, resources. And when we went in, we thought that it would be resources internal to the prosecutor's office. Caseloads, uh, support staff, uh, access to uh, investigators. But what we found it was resources outside the prosecutor's office, particularly in the judiciary, in that the availability of, of courtrooms to hear cases, uh, the number of judges that were available, the number of days every week that the courtroom was open, the, their lack of, of those required prosecutors to reevaluate cases because they couldn't possibly try everything that was coming through. So um, it led prosecutors to shift resources within their own office. Uh, in the Midwestern uh, County Prosecutor's Office, they shifted them to the very beginning of the process, putting more resources into screening to try to funnel more cases out of the system. Uh, in the Southeast, they um, reevaluated cases as units. So when cases couldn't be tried, they came back. And together as groups, they reevaluated cases to determine which were the strongest cases, which cases could, be, uh, could receive a different plea bargain, perhaps, to try to expedite the process, which cases perhaps had to be dismissed. We also found that outcomes varied a lot by prosecutor, so that um, the prosecutor mattered a great deal um, in determining the outcome of a case. So we found that across the offices, there was a lot of variation across prosecutors and what they saw as the goals of the criminal justice system, um, how they interpreted justice and fairness, um, were different, and whether fairness meant consistency in outcomes, or whether fairness meant consistency in process, or how they weighed factors, or how they viewed factors, not necessarily um, the same outcome 
with the same evaluation of the case. Let me ask you a little about this interplay between the sort of notion of evidence and the strength of the evidence, which is sort of intuitive. I think people understand what that means and this notion of justice. What did justice mean for those prosecutors? Right. Uh, both offices had a very clear philosophy that was communicated by the district attorneys in both places that prosecutors were to do justice, to do the right thing. Uh, that was the extent of the, of the direction that was given from above. It was a, but prosecutors saw that as a very powerful philosophy, as one that guided their decision making. They didn't see the decision making as unguided. It was clearly guided by the sense of justice. But that sense of justice was allowed to vary across the office. Um, we didn't get a clear definition of what justice meant. Sometimes uh, justice meant for some people um, uh, consistency in outcomes, that everyone would see similar outcomes for the same, for the same offense. And, and moreover, there were a large group of people who thought consistency was a very, very important piece of the process. Um, Others interpreted justice as individualized treatment, so that each individual defendant was assessed on their own. So how this would affect, how an outcome, a particular outcome would affect this defendant, and whether this was the right outcome for this defendant. So justice was, was allowed to vary in the office um, between these two extremes. One, uh, a sense of justice, meaning equality, or equitable treatment in, in outcome, and the other meaning individualized treatment, individualized outcome. Right, it's really interesting. So even, even with a strong sense of justice, and I suppose that's a, uh, it's, it's not a concept you can easily wrap your hands around in any concrete way, there were still obviously both within those offices and I assume between those offices pretty big differences in the use of discretion. There were different outcomes across prosecutors so that one prosecutor may decline 10 percent of cases while a different prosecutor looking at similar cases may decline 25 percent of them and we saw that across the office. I don't know that it led to disparate outcomes in a sense that there was any one particular characteristic of a case or defend, defendant that would predict a, a disparate a disparate outcome. Uh, I think what it, what it led to were very different views of how discretion should be exercised. Prosecutors in both offices understood they had a great deal of discretion. They understood they were wielding a great deal of, of power. What's interesting is that while we may see a different interpretation of justice, the sense of justice really did define what they, what they did. And, and, I, and I'll say this, um, I think in the end the, their interpretation of justice was very defendant focused, that it was fair treatment for the defendant. That fair treatment was allowed to vary, though, whether fair treatment went equitable outcome or whether fair treatment went individualized outcome. Given all that, and I know you, there are a number of policy recommendations that, that uh, you folks have in the report, but maybe you could go over the top two or three that, that stem from your findings. Yeah, I think more than recommendations, I think we have a few policy implications that, that come out of this. Um, one is this, this finding that we have that while evidence matters throughout a case, its, it's importance decreases over time as other factors uh, become more important. I think one, one policy implication of this is for us to determine which of those factors are we comfortable with influencing a case and how can the prosecutor's office control which factors matter. Two, I think this, this matter of outside influences and how they affect cases, particularly resources, um, outside the prosecutor's office and how they affect distribution of resources within the office raises questions about whether we think that's getting us the outcomes we want, particularly as trial rates continue to decline. Um, when we find out that the decrease in availability of trial of courtrooms is actually changing the way prosecutors view cases, we should think about whether that's the right outcome that we want. And, and three, the, the, the matter of consistency across prosecutors is one we should think about and what are we hoping for in, in consistency? Do we want consistent treatment or do we want consistent outcomes and how important are, are both of those for the prosec right. prosecution and, justice? And is there a natural sort of second phase of this work? There are a lot of research questions that weren't, weren't answered and I think getting more deeply into these contextual factors um, and how they affect cases I think is important in trying to understand the relationships between say law enforcement who are the providers of evidence and the prosecutor's office who then interpret and use it I think is, are important places for us to continue to, to, to examine uh, 
prosecutorial decision making. Well, thank you. It's fascinating, and uh, I think the value of this research is not just in, in the particular findings, but in that prosecutors' offices let you and the other research folks have almost complete access to their data to study something that has not really been studied uh, with any great specificity in the United States. It's really important, and thank you for coming. Great. Thanks so much.